Throughout this last chapter, we've learned how to create all the basic components of a fully working Arena or King of the Hill map, including doors and spawn room logic. I'm willing to bet a lot of you saw how it worked and got a bit overwhelmed. Perhaps you thought, wow, mapping is a lot of work if I have to do this every single time I make a new map. Well, good news! Once you learn how things work, you will very rarely have to deal with creating them all from scratch again. But the important part is learning the ins and outs of the system you are working with, so if something ever does go wrong or you need to change an aspect of them, you know what you're doing and how they work. Let me repeat that because it's a super important concept. Learn how these things work, create them manually at least once, and then use the shortcuts. Failing to do so will only hurt yourself in the future and limit yourself as a mapper. Once you have these things under your belt, then you can start taking shortcuts. To be completely honest, the last tutorial was the first time I've set up a King of the Hill or Arena map in about six years. I learned how they work once at the start and have copy-pasted them ever since. So now that we have that covered, let me show you how to copy and paste your way into creating a map. The two primary sources we're going to be using today is a Boojum Snarks Mapping Resource Pack, which you should have by now and if you don't, god damn you, and Frozen Space Entities Map Prefab. So to show you how these work, we're going to go back to our example King of the Hill map we created in the last episode and delete all the logic so we can recreate it much faster. You don't have to do this step, but I'm going to just do it for example. I'll leave the light environment and the health and ammo packs though. Now that that's all cleared out, we can recreate our spawn rooms. First we'll load up Frozen's base entities VMF. You can download it through the link in the description. You'll see that it includes the setups for two spawn rooms on either side, including 16 spawn points each, two resupply lockers, resupply room triggers, and resupply room visualizers. In the middle here, you'll find the basic filters, default environment settings copied from 2Fort, and a cube map to handle your reflections when we get to that point. We won't be using any of this middle part today, though. We'll start off with red side. Go to user under the viz groups and click off the checkbox for the floors. This will help us copy our entities over a bit easier. Just make sure you remember which side is which. Make sure that Groups is selected in the top right here under Select, otherwise it won't copy over any of the brushes as entities and it will lose all the grouping. Also you can turn on Texture Lock by pressing the TL button on the top bar of Hammer here, which will keep the Respawn Room Visualizer's texture in place on the brush. Now with the Selection tool uh, selected, go to the top down view and drag over the whole red side and hit Enter to select it. Hit Ctrl C to copy it. Minimize this map and open your project back up. Move your cursor onto the 3D view where you want to paste your entities and hit Ctrl V. Now rotate the whole thing so your spawn points are facing correctly, and deselect it. Grab the respawn room trigger and drag it to fill out the whole room. Then you can drag your resupply lockers and rotate them into position. These are grouped together so as long as you have groups selected in the top right, just grabbing the trigger will grab it and the prop. If you want to select only one of them, you can change it to objects or solids. Last we can drag our respawn room visualizer into the doorways. Again, if you have texture lock on, the material should stay in place on the brush. Drag it out so it roughly fills the doorway. If you get some of the material looping on the edges here, you can just raise the texture scale up and center it again. 0.55 works perfectly for our example doors. Now just copy it over to the other door with a shift drag and we have our spawn room set up. Now repeat the process for blue side. Now that we've exhausted Frozen's startup prefab pack for our respawn rooms, we can load up a Boojum Snarks game type library. These will be placed in the folder you defined when you installed the resource pack, but default it's located in the folder shown on the screen now. When you load this up, you're going to see a whole slew of game mode logic. In the Users tab of the Viz Groups bar on the side here, you can turn off everything you don't want to see, leaving the mode you want checked. For this example, we'll leave King of the Hill marked. This can be used for any stock game mode, but like I said, make sure you learn how they work before you go copy-pasting things into your map. You're just going to give yourself more of a headache down the road if you don't. You can read up on each mode in the Valve Developer Wiki, as I'm most likely not going to be covering a lot of these in my tutorial series. Now fly around into the 3D view and look for the trigger and control point left on the map. This will be all the logic you need for your cough map. Go to your top view and select only the middle part here and the logic entities next to it. You won't need the spawn points as we already did that in the last step. Deselect the floor with Ctrl left click and hit Ctrl C to copy the logic. Now go back to your map and point your cursor in the 3D view to where you want your capture point and hit Ctrl V. Move it around a bit if it's not quite in place in your top down view and adjust your trigger accordingly if necessary. And that is it! Our cough logic is now fully functional. Wasn't that so much easier than the last tutorial? And the cool part is you can do it this way from now on. Hooray mapping! Now the only thing left is slapping some doors in place. We can do this by using the prefabs that come with a Boojum Snarks pack. Click the Entities button, and on the right side here, click the drop-down under Categories. You'll see a whole bunch of fun stuff in here. The Doors menu will have a whole big pile of doors to use, team-filtered and regular. 
make sure you have filters in your map, which you can also set up under the General tab. The General tab also has resupply lockers and some other stuff, so feel free to utilize them as long as you know how they work. The cool part about all these prefabs is that you can make them over and over, and they will automatically be named correctly to match themselves without conflicting with any of the others. So for example, you can make a door or resupply locker over and over by just clicking, and not worry about any of the logic causing issues. Go back to the Doors tab and select Red Slide Large. This is the perfect size to fit in our doorways that we've created at the start of this tutorial, but feel free to try some of the others if you need them. Now left click on the ground where you roughly want your door to be placed. Oh snap, that's a prop door! You just cheated and did something before you learned how, you cheater! Go to the Selection tool, again with groups selected up here, and click on your new pile of entities. These are grouped up together so we can rotate and move them into place. Once you get it in position, repeat the process for the other door. And now repeat again for blue side, changing your prefab to blue team's version of the same door. Now we have a complete working cough map with far less work than the last tutorial, isn't that awesome? Feel free to compile and run around to confirm it all works if you'd like. And this concludes Chapter 2 of How to Make TF2 Maps, brought to you by tf2maps.net and essentials.tf. In the next chapter we'll go over creating your first full King of the Hill map, including the layout and some tips for developing it. We'll conclude the chapter with getting your map tested with actual players. As always, if you enjoyed this series and would like to see more, consider subscribing to this channel. Thanks for watching.